Welcome to this video about the biomechanics of tendon and ligament. In this video, we'll be focusing in particular on the tissue mechanics of tendon and ligament. Tendon and ligament has a hierarchical structure that gives rise to a crimp pattern because of the collagen fibers, as we discussed in the previous video. This actually gives rise to some of the really interesting behavior of tendon and ligament. So if you take a micrograph of tendon and ligament, of of the collagen fibers. If you take an SEM image, scanning electron microscope image of the collagen fibers in tendon and ligament when it's unloaded, you'll see that the collagen has a little bit of a disorganized, crimped appearance. You can see the wave of the crimp uh, right here in the uh, tissue. If you apply a load to it, you'll see that the fibers straighten out like this. And that Initial straightening out is an important feature of collagen, uh, the mechanical behavior of collagen. So let's consider these, uh, the crimped fibers. We're gonna model each of the crimped fibers as a spring. Remember that collagen has these kind of staggered repeating units that make up its structure. So if we think about each one of them as a spring that has a slightly different length, then when we apply a load, to the collagen, we're gonna stretch different springs at different times. And when we stretch just the one spring, we'll have a stretch, a force as a function of, or a force as a function of displacement that increases linearly. And then when we get a second spring stretched, when we stretch C1, then we're gonna have two springs in parallel and the tendon is gonna become slightly stiffer. And when we get a third one, it'll become slightly stiffer. So if we apply a force, and graph the force as a function of the amount of stretch, we'll end up with a graph that gets increasingly steeper as more and more of the uh, springs, our collagen fibers, are engaged. And we call this the toe region of the tendon, and it's the result of the crimped fibers of the tendon stress strain graph, and it's the result of the crimped fibers straightening up. After you get through the toe region, you get a linear region on the stress strain curve, just like you have on a traditional engineering material or like we saw in bone. And then you eventually, at the top of the linear region, start to experience macros microscopic failure of the tendon, of the collagen fibrils. And then as you get into the plastic deformation region at the top, you start to experience macroscopic failure of the collagen fibrils. So this is the characteristic kind of S-shaped stress strain curve of a tendon. The physiologic strain range is 6 to 8% strain, and it is interesting to note that microscopic failure does start to occur at the top of the physiologic range. So uh, even if you're operating within the physiologic range, there is some small damage to your tendon, which is normal and healthy. So we talk a lot about ligament and tendon as being the same, but they're not actually quite identical. And this slide shows the differences between them. You'll notice that the ligament you'll notice that the ligament is slightly less linearly organized than the tendon. And you'll notice that the, so the collagen fibril bundles in a ligament are nearly parallel, while the collagen fibrils in a tendon are completely parallel. And the reason for that is that tendon, the collagen fibrils are aligned along to transmit the force from the muscle and the force acts along the line of the tendon. So the force being applied to a tendon is nearly always axial along the length of the collagen fibers, whereas the ligament, uh, because it is supposed to be a, addressing and stabilizing the joint, uh, might experience loads that aren't exactly along its length as you kind of think about your knee as you cut or move laterally. Um, you're not pulling exactly along the length of the ligament. They also have slightly different structural properties. So if you test both ligament and tendon, uh, you'll find that ligament has an elastic modulus in the range from 300 to 500 megapascals, whereas tendon ranges from 60 to 2300 megapascals. And that larger modulus for tendon reflects that tendon uh, experiences greater loads than ligament. Uh, likewise, tendon has a higher ultimate stress, uh, but it does experience less ultimate strain than ligament, probably because the muscle 
the tendon is attached to can also take up some of the stretch uh, that's associated with the strain. Here's a table uh, from Orthopedic Biomechanics by Bartel that compares the age range and the site location of some different ligament properties for whole ligaments. So that means testing the entire ligament as a whole as opposed to testing just the collagen fibrils or one of the bundles of the collagen of collagen in the ligament. And you'll note that there's a loading rate provided and a stiffness and an ultimate strength for the tendon. And you can see as a person gets older, the ACL gets less stiff. You can also see that there's some site dependence here even within the same age groups. So the mechanical properties of tendon and ligament are very site dependent as well as very age dependent. And actually you'll find that the cross-sectional area of your tendons and ligaments decreases with age as well. In the next video, we'll talk about uh, tendon and ligament injury. I'll see you there.